in this episode, we leave our motorhome Jürgen at home and go to enjoy all the trappings of a static caravan holiday on the beautiful Hailing Island. If you remember the actor Robin Asquith from the 1970s, then you may be aware of the Confessions film series that he starred in. We stayed for five nights at Mill Rive in Hailing Island, which was the location used for a number of film productions, including Confessions from a Holiday Camp, Heidi High and EastEnders. Okay, we can't see a thing, it's very sunny, but <laughs> where are we, Peg? We're in Hailing Island at Mill Rive. Fantastic. Okay, let's go and see if we can check in and what that process is like. Okay, so we're just approaching guest services and we're going to test the checking in procedure and see how quick it is. <laughs> Okay, we've checked in and I have to say 10 out of 10, very pleasant, very quick. And good information. Lots of good information. Yeah, we've got given a map, got told exactly where to park. We can park right outside our unit, which is great. So, so far, first impressions, very impressive. Um, and Hailing Island looks lovely, harbours and boats, piano tuners. <laughs> I'm not sure what else we, we could really want the for. Sun the sun is shining, it's beautiful. Hey, there's Graham. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, Jack, how you doing, mate? Good to see you again. Charlie. Happy birthday, Charlie. Graham, good to see you. Hello, Harry. Oh, who are we investing in? Good to see you, mate. Oh, yeah. oh good to see you. I'm absolutely loving that beard. Absolutely amazing. Great to see you. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi. Good to see you. It's been, been too long. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've arrived. Will we get in? Have we got the right place? Or are we at the wrong place? Oh, yeah, it must be the right place because the door's opened. Wow. Right. So this is our home for five days. Look at this. Wow, even got good recycling. Look, and my first impressions are very good. Look at this, recycling. Beautiful little lounge area. I'm going to open the... Uh, it's platform. very warm in here. TV, fire, I don't think we'll be needing that. Well, not now. Not the moment. Little seated area there for the table. Peg's struggling with the door there. Thank Can you. she get through? This is a test. Peg, you've got three minutes to open the door. Oh, she's done it in two. <laughs> and straight out, look at this. What do you think, Peg? I'm delighted. A proper fridge freezer, no less. Peg is absolutely delighted. We've got a we've got a microwave oven, a cooker. There'll be apple crumbles galore made there. I can tell you that now. Into the main area of the caravan. There you go. There's the bathroom, shower sink no bath so they advertise it as a bath or a shower but my understanding is they're all showers unless you go for the super luxury option and here's the master bedroom complete with storage facility wardrobes a cupboard I'm not sure what's in there yet extra duvets, a lovely view of next door and a bit of greenery there absolutely amazing you've got a TV oh and a second toilet so we didn't even know there was a second toilet 
that's quite convenient. No pun intended. And there we've got a nice little dressing table with mirror. There's an electrical socket there and another one on the other side so we can recharge all our items. I can't see any USB sockets but luckily we've brought our own. Yeah, look at that, plenty of charging points. So that's good. Twin room that we're not making use of there. Quite compact but um, functional. Peg's getting windows open galore. But yeah, I mean it's very clean, it's very pleasant, very new and it comes equipped with a toaster, a kettle and a tree mug rack. No dishwasher, slightly disappointing there. Oh, we've got kitchen essentials in there, that's all very nice with a sponge and no doubt some cleaning cloths and washing up liquid. There's a personal little welcome card from Nathan, Jackie and Mitzi. Thank you Jake and uh, Jackie, Nathan and Mitzi. So that's all very nicely done. A little personal touch never goes amiss. A casserole dish. A casserole dish. Is, can you, will you be able to make cakes and pies? So pies are to be made. Great. And, and this must be the... Oh look at this. So this is the fridge that Peg found earlier with a proper freezer. So oh, there's, no ice in there. there's no ice but I'm going to get the beer in immediately. Yeah. So we're going to make ice as our first priority. Peg knows what we need here. And that is... Yeah. It's basically get the ice in. And I'm going to get the beer from the car because that needs to be loaded in ASAP. Right, I'm going to do the acid test now and that's to see how good the internet connection is. So I'm just setting it up to see if I can stream Sky Sports. I have brought a Now TV stick with me. So I'm just entering the password that was provided. I'm now connecting to the wireless connection. It looks like every caravan has their own uh, Wi-Fi code, so it's not shared across the park. Yeah, we're in. So the first letter, the first character was a zero and everything else, all the other characters were letters. So it says I'm connected. OK, so we have success. We're in. So this is this is one with Unlike ours, this is one that comes with a hot tub. Lift the lid. And there, that's what you get. If you book early enough. Beautiful. Or if it's your birthday. Or it's your birthday. As it is Charlie's birthday.
can you just remind me what's the what are we looking at over there well over there we're looking at Witterings. Witterings. and the water here is part of chichester harbour chichester harbour kind of a bit like new zealand because we've got this sand dune um a lot of sand dunes which is lovely um, but i think it's privately owned right okay so there you go it's an interesting looking place so there's some famous people that have property on there yes um, so rumour has it. I'm so rumour has it. I uh, think. Kate Winslet, um, right. Elton John maybe. Elton John and and, uh, um, uh, and others, no doubt. Richard Branson. I Richard think. Branson. He, he's the one. He probably owns that island. He probably does own it. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, where are we? We are in Hailing Island. And what we're looking at now? This is the Solent. Ah, the Solent. And this is behind it is the Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight, fantastic. And just seeing if you can see, uh, oh, you probably can't see, but far out there's a square blob yeah. in the water. And it's basically a marker ball, and it's about 120 feet tall. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you look over to your right, you can see these big lumps, rectangular lumps. Yeah, got it, yeah. They're the old uh, de sea defences from Trafalgar era. Really? And fantastic. there's lots of water to as we go down, I will with some other thank interesting you. Thank factors. You. Thank you. We, we like interesting factors. I should head down here. I won't beat you off. I do not want to beat you off. Woohoo! Hey! Oh, wow. This one's popular. <laughs> thank you. Two chocolates. Two chocolates. There you go. There you go. Beautifully done. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're just taking a walk Hello. to see what the rest of the park's like. Um, what is apparent is there's a lot of vacant plots, at the moment at least, with no caravans, static caravans sitting on them. So maybe they're ready for sale, perhaps. And they might be ready to expand a little bit more as well, but there's certainly, you know, the foundations for quite a few more to go on. Yeah, so they're all ready. Um, we're probably going to have a look at the sales office for the fun of it, see what they've uh, got to offer. And we're just heading off now to the nature reserves, or the signs for nature reserves, so we thought we'd go and see if we can see any animals, or birds, anything. Or bears, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the park gives a really good impression, so even when it's fully booked, there doesn't seem that many people there. And maybe the part of that reason is because probably half the pitches haven't got vans on at the moment. Um, we're going now for a walk to where we think the, the nature reserve is, by some water. It's all rather pleasant and it's really quiet. And it's gorgeous weather. Yes. I mean, we're mid-October here and it's absolutely gorgeous. So we're very lucky with the weather. Um, it's, I mean, it did rain the other night, it was very heavy, but... Uh, most, most of the time it's been glorious sunshine. Yeah, but uh, that was overnight so it didn't cause us any problems whatsoever. But this is just beautiful. Um, yeah, as I was saying, the, the park, well, we believe, is still under development. There's plenty done. It's all very nice. But uh, I think they're still re, you know, developing it further, so it's only going to get better. Perhaps if I'd got one thing that I didn't, you know, like, it would be the fact there's no laundry facilities at the moment. Maybe they'll address that in the future. I think it would benefit people staying more than a few days to have access to a washing machine. There's no shop on site either, but there is a little, literally within walk, five minutes walk. Yeah, so in our van there's no washing machine, dishwasher, um, or, what, or something else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we expect a little bit too much luxury when we come out of our motor. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we don't get that in the motel either, do we? But, um, but yeah, so the, our luxury van doesn't come with a dishwasher or a washing machine, which is fine, because, you know, you, most people don't need that for two or three days, do they? No, but if you were here with a family for two weeks, you'd certainly need washing facilities. Yeah, yeah. A laundrette of some description. Yeah, I think a laundrette would be essential, so uh, 
I'm sure uh, in the future they'll, they will probably install something to um, for, for that purpose. No matter what, it's a lovely park, it's clean, the staff are friendly, um, the pool could do with being a bit bigger for our liking, but it's a nice little family friendly pool. Um, but the staff have all been gorgeous and the weather is just cracking. And I'm quite impressed with Hayling Island, do you? Yeah, I love Hayling Island. Okay, so thank you to a very helpful lady who was pushing a cleaning trolley around. She's directed us to a gate which has given us access from the site straight onto the estuary path. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. It's raised above the estuary, so we've got a good vantage point looking over the harbour and the estuary and some boats. Further along our walk, we saw some new units being delivered to the camp. Oh, this one's got the hot tub. It's 104. 104, you see, I was five out. I'm the nearest, peg pays. <laughs> it's 104 995, so it's basically. I said 109. Did you? You're furthest away with your, your 90. Forest Oak, year 2023. So I'm sorry, but you're going to have to dig deep for this. And this one does look nice. This is what we're talking about. Okay, this is what I would want all day long for that winter soak, a nice bath. We miss a bath. We miss a bath. Nicely decorated, TV there, two windows in your boudoir, nice little mirror, no doors on the wardrobe but it's nicely presented. Yeah, they've got, I mean, that's designed Beautiful. to make it feel more spacious. Yeah, it, it? clever use of mirrors, has to be said. Yeah. Put 10% down today, Peg. Ten and a half grand. And you've got yourself a nice little place to spend your weekends in. So, Peg, what did you, th you think? We've just been around some new ones. Were you impressed? I think if we had a spare 110 grand we might uh, invest in one. Okay, so if we win the lottery, Peg might be interested. Um, there's various site fees depending on which pitch you're interested in and that varies from 6,000 up to about 10,000. Um, the, the higher the, the price, the better the pitch. It might be near the nature reserve or some water or something like that. But you choose where to site your van. Um, they were very helpful in explaining all that to us and if we win the lottery we'll be back. This is the Missing Squirrel. It's a really nice bar area with some lovely outdoor space. Okay, here's the pool. Hope you can see that. Oh, that's hot. This is basically a couple of years old. It, since when Covid came in, they knocked down the existing old site and they've rebuilt it from scratch. It used to be a Butlins or a Pontin, something like that. We're going to go and check online to see what it was. Love to see the old photos of how it used to look. And they're going to be putting in the future, they're going to put a shop in, a laundrette, they're going to be adding further facilities, um, a hot tubs and all sorts of a, you know, general sauna. use, sauna. Sauna in a gym area, I think they said they were going to add. So um, yeah, I think um, in a couple of years it'll be really amazing. Yeah. But I have to say them home in, yes it's October but it's very quiet. Mm. Lovely and quiet, you just hardly see anybody around. Mm. About two people in the bar. No kids playing in the play area. No, I mean, there was a few more at the weekend, but what day is it today, Peg? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, so uh, yeah, that probably explains why there's less people around.
we've just been having a chat with a really interesting guy at the uh, holiday park that we're staying at and his name is Mason and he's been telling us all about the Billy Tracks and the Billy Path which is a train that used to run between Portsmouth, Havant and Hailing Island and the train ran here for a long time and eventually one of them came off the tracks and then that was the end of the of the train so now it's a it's a path that you can walk along so we're going to just go along and see now mason told us an awful lot of history and i don't know if i can remember everything he told me about hailing island but he did say that the uh, where we were staying in mill Rythe was actually a place that monks had um used as a mill for um creating oh clay so they had a clay mill there and they dug out the ponds so they could utilise the water and the power of the water coming in and they did some kind of weirs or whirs where the water was coming through and it would turn the mills to create um, the ability for them to be able to do something with the clay. So that was one thing he told us about. He also told us a little bit about the Romans that came over and built the first bridge between Hailing and the mainland and the fact that they'd called it hailing because they believed in hail. You know, they hailed the island as something that should be revered. And that it's become anglicised throughout the way to be H-A-Y instead of H-A-I-L-I-N-G. Um, really interesting guy. He was telling us that there's still Roman coins that can be found along different places. There, there was some kind of particular water spot that actually was born at Hailing Island. And you can see that there's loads of different water sports going on. And it's a real hev haven for anybody who'd like to do anything like that. The other thing we learnt was that um, Mill Rythe is, was used for at least three filming um, locations. locations that we are aware of which was confessions of a camp campsite confessions of a holiday camp confessions of a holiday camp it wish you were here oh well it was used in wish you were here they, they did a um, an episode on it it was also used in eastenders with and doc cotton visited the site and filmed there and parts of Heidi High. And parts of Heidi High were also filmed on the site. So these were typically done out of season when there were no guests. Um, and all pre exists what the site actually looks like now. There's only, there's very little remaining of the original site, um, but there are a few bits and pieces. The one thing that still exists is the pond. Um, and this, um, the pond is something that, that was actually used at the in the end of confessions when you come into mill Rythe, there's uh, you'll see a couple of little train tracks so this was a train that used to run around the camp and although that now no longer exists to the camp and around the camp the train is still on the seafront and operational to this day and it was Warner Leisure who owned the site. They built the site in the first place, the camp rather, um, that's there. And they ran the, the train track as well. I am now standing on the site of where the swimming pool used to be. This has now been replaced by an extension to the caravan park. Here you can see the current park map and where the pool used to be located. This is how the pond looks today. This was used in a couple of scenes from Confessions from a Holiday Camp. If you enjoyed watching the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.